Hey, 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 Sharon Hornell from here, Pajama Grandma with the crown. I'm feeling the crown today. A crown and coffee. I need more coffee today. I don't know about you. Hope you're having an awesome day. I want to take a couple of minutes to talk about supersizing your business, the process. <laughs> Sorry, wake up. Most people aren't even up yet. I'm a morning person, but you don't have to be a morning person to supersize your business. You just have to want to supersize your business. So what are the processes necessary to supersize your business? And what does that have to do with processes? Well, I may have mentioned yesterday, but I don't remember if I did. So I'm going to repeat it again today. There's really only three ways to supersize your business and they all involve customers. Surprise. I know. Did you think it was that simple? The only way to supersize your business is to get more customers or I guess you could sell a higher ticket item, but you need customers to buy that item. So it all rolls back to what I'm going to share now. There are three ways to supersize your business. Number one, get more customers, more new customers. Number two, get the customers that you already have to spend more money or number three, get the customers that you have and the new customers to come more often to your business. That is it. So we can make strategies sound complicated and we can really, you know, sell you expensive or a lot of other people will sell you expensive solutions that have all these complicated, intricate strategies and things. But bottom line is it all boils down to customers and how well we serve them and how we serve them and how well we serve them and what we provide them with is determined for all of our businesses. However, in whatever we're doing, we all have a process that we use to serve those customers, to give them the products or services or to do for them what it is that we do for them. The problems we solve for them, the, the way we make their life less painful or more pleasurable, whatever it is that we do, we have a process for that. Most businesses, I will say the vast majority, and I'm not going to guess a number, but I'm saying over 90% of businesses just do what they do without really knowing how, what, or why they do it. And to get a competitive advantage, what you want to do is you want to identify the processes, actually write the babies down, document them and know, and look at your process of what you do now and make that as efficient and effective as possible and can be continually improving those processes. But the first step is always, okay, what are the processes that we're using? Especially look at the ones that are working and ask yourself, how can I do more of that? And then find the processes that you're kind of just muddling through. Um, and how can I improve those? For example, in my Italian food manufacturing business, which was super successful, by the way, I had excellent documented manufacturing processes, how we manufactured the products that we provided to people and how we did the services that we did, because we did things we did not very often, but when we did, for example, we did store demos. We had a documented process and checklists and things of how to do that so that we were always providing our customers who had other customers with a consistent, awesome experience. And we had clearly documented manufacturing processes so that our product was, it was handmade, but it was always the same extremely high quality, amazing product that people came to know, love and expect from us. And we could achieve that because we all were on the same page. We all followed the same processes. We all used the same recipe. I love cooking and baking. And so I love recipes. I, I don't use recipes. I'm not one of those cooks, but in the manufacturing business for food, we had very strict recipes, but not just the recipe, but the processes and the procedures that each person used to measure the ingredients that went into those recipes. And that's why we want to look at and identify our processes. So, if you don't have your processes written down, I'm going to give you a, a free hint right here. Go start writing them down. Do the little boxes, do a little process map. If you would like comment hashtag yes below, and I will share, I've got a process mapping procedure that I created with a group of people when I was in corporate America. And I've taught this to thousands and thousands of people. And it's just the, how do you write down and identify your processes? 
and it can be super simple. Hey, you can write them down on a napkin if you want, if that works for you. But you want to make sure that it's kind of like having your goals not written down. How many people listening to this will admit that they don't have written goals? I suspect if you have a business and a successful business, at some point you've written down your goals before. You might not have, and I would love to know that. But to me, it's the same thing. Having your processes and procedures documented and written down in whatever form. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be regimented. Now, keep in mind, I come from a quality engineering background, so I know how to make it really complicated and formulaic and the way the big companies do it, which I don't disagree with or agree with. It's just whatever works for your business and your organization. It can be, like I said, it can be written in a little notebook. Hey, this is how we do things so that we can actually look at and decide is this the best way to do things? So the first step in coming up with your strategy, and I will almost say not, not maybe the most important, but a very important step to really ensure your success and guarantee that you're going to be providing the best service and quality to your customers, which is really that's paramount because whoever, whoever does that wins automatically and supersizes their business. But they have to know about it. That's a whole marketing thing. But um, today, it's all about knowing that it's important to know what you're doing and understand what you're doing. So that's the first step in being able to improve it. And we always want to be improving because the world is always changing. If we're not improving and growing and serving our customers or clients or patients or whatever they're called for your business better than other people, they will go find better service. They will go find what they want and they will get it from whoever is giving them what they want the most and it doesn't have anything to do with money. It has to do with are they getting what they want and what they need best in the best way for them and it's different for all of our customers. So that's it. Today's clue, if you want it for the scavenger hunt, is putting hashtag process P-R-O-C-E-S-S in the comments below and then you will get today's scavenger hunt clue. I'll see you again tomorrow or in a few minutes or whenever you're listening to the next step of the scavenger hunt. Soon, I like to say see you tomorrow and have an awesome day, but go start writing down and identifying your processes. And if you've done them already, woohoo! 10 points for you because you're ahead of at least 90% of the other businesses and the business owners out there. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to be the one that does this. You can have someone else in your organization or somebody else that you know actually document and write down the processes for you. Just describe to them how you do things and let somebody else write it down. Or you can make a video capturing it and have somebody else transcribe it. Or you can just video record the notes of the processes that you do. There's a lot of different ways to get that information out of your head and onto a piece of paper or into a computer. And the reason we want to do that is so that we can get help with things so our businesses and our lives aren't dependent on us being the only one who knows how to do things. Because I know there's some people listening to this video right now that are like I was and thought, I have to do everything myself because I do it better and faster than anybody else. Wrong answer. If you want to supersize, we have to let go of that belief and just do a good job teaching and showing other people how to do the things that we do so well so that they can do it too. Because I guarantee there are people out there that can do absolutely everything on the planet better than I can. I just want to find them and bring them into my organization so that they can be doing what they love to do, like think accounting or paperwork or detailed stuff. That's not my gig. I had to, in my brick and mortar businesses, bring those specialties into my organization and hire people to help me with that. Now, you don't have to always hire people, but that is one option. So that is today's scavenger hunt clue. I didn't, well, I didn't tell it to you yet because you have to put hashtag process in to get it. Go out, make an awesome day. Realize that supersizing your business is way easier than you've been led to believe it is if you just follow the process. Bye. Have an awesome day.